Hey everybody, Ron Bielefeld, Whistling Wings Photography. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about a subject that comes up on my tours amongst my clients and myself all the time. I may have covered this in another video a long time ago, but I'm going to do it again because it's about what shooting mode is best for shooting birds in flight. I shoot a lot of birds in flight. Birds in flight, B-I-F, acronym for birds in flight. Like that, I shoot birds in flight. Ah, we'll talk about that later. Right now, we're talking about shooting modes for birds in flight and which one is best. I think there is a best choice of the, I don't know what, there might be four choices, four general choices, full manual exposure, aperture priority, shutter priority, auto ISO, manual exposure with auto ISO active. Yeah. Well, what? let's just go with those. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk about um, kind of the best way to go, I think, in the way I shoot birds in flight and why I do that. And then we'll talk about the other options. Well, first let's talk about what, sh you know, the dynamics of shooting birds in flight. And when I mean flight, when I mean birds in flight, I mean the bird is flying around from point A to point B and that distance is pretty, pretty large. I'm not talking about a bird sitting on a branch and then jumping up to this branch. That's not a bird in flight in this scenario. I'm talking about a bird that's flying around against backgrounds then that are probably changing from let's say blue sky to trees, green trees or brown trees to dark water and then back up to the trees and then back up to the sky and sometimes they're doing this very, very rapidly. So these backgrounds or the overall scene is changing quite a bit, very quickly. And so that right there makes me think that full manual is probably the best way to go. Because what's most important? Getting the exposure correct on your subject, your bird in this case. This is subject photography. And so with full manual, I can just set my exposure for my bird in the light that I'm hoping to capture it in from here, 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 here. You know, not, not way back there, not way up here, you know, but in, I've set up in a situation where I've got the sun rising behind me, beautiful backgrounds in front of me, sky, some trees, the water, let's say, and I can set my exposure for my bird. It's full manual. The camera's meter can change nothing. You can see that little pointer jumping around on your meter scale and your viewfinder all you want, but it's not changing anything. I've set my exposure. I've set my shutter speed, my aperture, and my ISO, and I've got my exposure. And now no matter where that bird flies, against blue sky, those green trees in the background, the black water down here, it doesn't matter. The bird's in basically the same light. So I'm going to get a good exposure on my subject, the most important thing. Well, you're not going to get, the, I mean, that's the dynamic of birds in flight. And if you bring your camera's meter into play by shooting a priority mode, let's say, or auto ISO, then things are going to, the dynamic of your exposures on that series of images, Let's look at a series of images of a roseate spoonbill flying in, transitioning from either a sky background to a darker background to vegetation, which is darker, bright water coming through to darker vegetation. This is in manual exposure. I set the exposure for the bird. And you can see the bird stays pretty much perfectly exposed. Well, not perfect. Okay, I'm not perfect. But it's a good exposure, I think, on this bird all the way through. Now, you go and bring your meter into play, and let's say we're going to shoot shutter priority. You think, well, that's a fairly decent choice because shutter should be your priority. Shutter speed should be your priority when shooting bir birds in flight. I could talk today. It'd be great. When you're shooting birds in flight, you want faster shutter speeds. So by picking shutter priority, you can at least set a shutter speed that you want fast enough What's your meter going to change then? Well, your aperture. But it's still going to change your aperture based on what? 
on the luminosity of the bird, the brightness of the bird, the light your bird is in? Uh, no. It's going to change your aperture based on the overall luminosity of the scene, the brightness of the whole scene for the most part. And that's going to change from up here against the blue sky to against a vegetated background that's darker, maybe even a little bit darker water or something as you come to the end of the flight. So now the exposure is changing and thus the exposure on your bird is changing. And up here against the blue sky, here, take a look. This is shutter priority. The bird's way too dark up here because the meter is compensating for the bright sky and making everything too dark, the bird especially. Then once it gets down to the vegetation, you see the bird's getting really, really bright, maybe even too bright, because it's compensating now, bringing up the overall brightness of the scene because of the dark foliage background. I don't want that. I want my exposure to be good all the way through, within a third of a stop or so, or not even better than that. Same thing happens if you choose aperture priority mode. It's even worse because now what is the meter, you know, what is the meter controlling? It's controlling your shutter speed. Well, I don't want my shutter speeds jumping all over the place when I'm shooting birds in flight, that's for sure. Especially going on the low end. If it goes to the high end, great. You know, up here against the blue sky, it's probably going to jack the shutter speed way up. Well, that's okay for a bird in flight, but what happens when it gets down against this really dark background? It's going to drop my shutter speeds way down to brighten up the entire scene, including my bird making it too bright. But then my shutter speed's way low. What, 1 2 50th of a second maybe or something like that? Wow. You know, you can get some sharp shots of birds in flight at 1 2 50th of a second, but I don't think it's an optimal thing, and I don't think that's what most of us are trying to, to set for our shutter speeds out there shooting birds in flight. So aperture priority isn't so great. Yeah, what about auto ISO? What about setting your aperture? and your shutter speed to where you want it, that's nice, keeping it there, meter's not gonna change that, but letting the ISO bounce around. Well, that's better, I guess, but it's still gonna change your exposure of the bird, of your bird based on background or overall scene luminosities, and you're gonna get many frames of your bird where your bird is exposed less than optimal, less than optimally based on what you want it. So, Auto ISO really isn't the scenario for, you know, isn't really the setting for this kind of shooting scenario. Shoot full manual. Set for your bird and the light you want to capture it in. That's why I shoot full manual, because you can deal with changing overall scene luminosities. Well then, you know, I've got my clients saying, well, yeah, that's if you have your meter set to like evaluative or something, or even center weighted, where it's looking at the whole scene. Just set it to spot metering. Have you ever tried using spot metering on birds in flight? I shoot Canon for the most part, and Canon cameras, when you set them, the R3, the R5, the R7, for example, when you set them to spot metering, it puts a circle in the middle of your, your frame. It's not a very big circle. It's not a little bitty spot. Okay, it's, it's a circle you got to keep your subject in that circle in order for it to meter off of your subject. That can be difficult when you're trying to pan with a bird in flight. What if the bird's relatively small? It's not even going to fill the circle, so it's still going to be bringing in some background elements into your exposure. And hey, even if you could keep that circle on your bird, there's light spots on your bird, there's dark spots on your bird, there's wings coming down shadowing the bird one second and then up in full brightness on, let's say, the spoonbills, which are bright pink and white and stuff. You know, you're Trust me, your exposures are going to be all over the place. Even worse than if you shot an evaluative metering or center weighted metering or something like that where it's looking at the whole scene luminosities and setting your exposure based on that. Spot metering is not the solution. Now, the negative people that say, well, I'm just going to, I just dial in different exposure compensation as it's flying around. Hey, if you can do that, more power to you. But I'm in some scenarios where that bird is against all different overall scene luminosities every couple split, split seconds. We're not talking about every couple seconds. In a split second, I can't dial in exposure compensation that quickly and be accurate about it. And why, even if you can do it, why? Why put yourself through that 
in my mind. I'm not saying you. I'm saying, in my mind, I'm saying, Ron, why put yourself through that? Just set your exposure, manual exposure, for your bird in the light you're trying to capture it in, and you're good to go no matter where that bird flies. Against blue sky, dark trees, darker water, whatever. It doesn't matter. If it happens to go way off axis of the light, like sunrise behind us, and it, well then I've got ISO set up here and I can change it a little bit and I can do that pretty quickly. But anyway, that's why I choose to shoot manual exposure for birds in flight. Because it just gives you the maximum number of well exposed frames when you've got a bird that's flying against all sorts of different backgrounds or scene luminosities in a, in a few seconds sometimes. The other reason why you know shooting manual exposure is great is because it gives you more ability to be creative. For example, with these rosy spoonbills, there's a time when the sun's coming up, they're lit up beautiful with a sunrise, but the background is still shaded. If you crank up your shutter speeds to say, you know, on these mirrorless cameras now, what? How about one twelve thousandth of a second, something like that? And you get the bird and everything else set, your ISO and your aperture, of course, to where that bird is exposed nicely. But because of that really fast shutter speed, when it gets a, when that bird flies against that really shaded background, you end up with a perfectly black background. Nicely lit up bird, background completely blacked out. Try doing that with a, any kind of priority mode. It's not going to let you. Shooting manual is the way to take total control of your exposures and be as creative as you can be. So right there, I think that's just a really amazing you know, reason to shoot full manual exposure and shoot it all the time, really. I, I hardly ever shoot a priority mode. When would I shoot a priority mode? Well, there's a couple, well, I'll just give you one scenario. And first I'll give you the general scenario. When you have a background and a subject, where the light is changing in concert with each other. So if the sun comes out, the background the birds against gets brighter and so does the bird. When the clouds come, the background behind the bird gets darker, so does the bird. Okay, that's not the case when you're shooting a bird in flight where it's lit the same all the way and the background or overall scene luminosities are changing independent of the bird. Okay, that's, that's, why, that's where manual comes in. So let's say we have warblers in a bush. And it's a partly cloudy day and it's windy and it's cloudy, then it's sunny, then it's cloudy, then it's sunny. Woo! I could shoot manual exposure there in that scenario, but it would be, you know, moving the dial all the time. And that's a lot of work. Hey, shutter priority might be the better way to go there. Let the meter change when the sun comes out and when the sun goes back behind the cloud, let it change the, the exposure based on my original setting with exposure compensation dialed in for, for my subject. A lot easier way to shoot that. It's not really birds in flight, but and that's what we're talking about here, but there's an example of where I would shoot a priority mode. Maybe auto ISO. Would be, that would be a great scenario for auto ISO to me. So anyway, that's, you know, that's it. I just really, it's an interesting conversation that I have many, many times with people. And you know, there's nothing magical about shooting manual ex exposure, fully manual. It used to be more difficult when you couldn't see your exposures like you can now with mirrorless cameras. That's one of the best things to come with mirrorless cameras is that you can see your exposure simulation through your viewfinder or on the back of your camera, your LCD screen, where you couldn't do that before when you were looking through your lens, your camera. So now, you know, shooting manual and getting your exposures correctly has never been easier. So there's, you know, no real excuse not to shoot manual exposure a lot of times. Except maybe when you're in a scenario where it's just going to be a lot more efficient not shooting in manual exposure. So anyway, that's it. I don't know if I convinced anybody to try manual exposure that wasn't already working with it. But I thought I'd get it out there again. I shoot Biff. I love shooting birds in flight. And I've been trying to shoot birds in flight since I was a little kid, since I could hold a camera. Uh, I've been infatuated with birds and then capturing them on film and now digitally 
with, uh, while they're flying. And so you know, I decided to form kind of an informal club. It's called I Shoot Biff Club. And I don't know, maybe you want to join. How do you join? Hey, $25 for a t-shirt gets you into the club. What else do you get by joining the club? A t-shirt. That's it. There's, there's nothing else. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we, can, maybe we can do something a little more formal. You know, let me know what you think down in the, in the uh, comments about my I shoot Biff idea. And you know, I've, I've, got, I've got other colors. Shirts. I've got blue, which I, I like the blue. That's nice. I've got yellow, of course. I've got OD green, which those of you who know me at all, I love camouflage and OD green. And on the back, you know, it says, it says Whistling Wings Photography and on there. So, if you know, if you want to join the club, you can let me know and buy a t-shirt. I'll have a web page up at some point where you can go buy t-shirts if you want. Maybe I'll even have hats or caps someday. But anyway, let me know what you think. Maybe we can get a little discussion forum going amongst people that really love to shoot birds in flight. Who knows where this could go? No. Anyway, hey, until next time, I hope you have great light. I hope you're getting great images. Be safe out there. I'll see you soon.